Hello gentles and ladymen, it's that time once again, fluorescent lamp frying time. Indeed, I have another lamp that's just about at the end of its rope, and uh, it's time to finish it off for good. And uh, the lamp in question is right here. It is indeed the original lamp that came in the Rayovac Magnum uh, generic 4 watt cool white lamp. Uh, over the uh, week long power outage I used the Magnum a lot. I put probably about 20 hours on it total and uh, I noticed that the uh, while the lamp was working just fine at the time it would occasionally quickly go in and out of a cold cathode discharge. It would get really dim and glow blue at one of the ends and uh, I switched it out for another lamp and uh, it worked just fine after that and it was a lot brighter so I've determined that this lamp has pretty much finally had it I'll show you now what it does. I've already uh, have uh, attempted to fry it a little bit uh, using something which I'll show you in a moment, but this is what it does now. Just really dim and flickery and you can hear the ballast chattering. Really black at the ends. It doesn't leave a lot of length for actual light to show. So uh, what I'm going to use to fry this lamp is something that someone, a member of Lighting Gallery, actually sent me and it's this. This is a, uh, a lantern ballast that came out of a rechargeable lantern. I don't know what kind. I don't know if it would have been a Coleman or what. But uh, this came out of a lantern which ran off a 9.6 volt rechargeable battery. Presumably a, a NICAD battery pack. And uh, she had junked the lantern but kept the ballast. She didn't want the ballast so she sent it to me with something else. That's uh, something I'll show in a, another video someday. This works absolutely fine. Uh, it originally powered two 4 watt lamps and uh, it works really well. This is actually one of the best uh, lantern ballasts that I've ever seen. There's nothing special about it. It's just a simple uh, circuit that uses one transistor uh, what they call a blocking oscillator circuit and uh, it works really well. It doesn't particularly drive lamps very hard. It's uh, it's pretty ordinary in that regard, but uh, it has a really high open circuit voltage, and so this is really good for uh, r starting and running lamps that uh, might otherwise uh, not start on a more ordinary ballast. This ballast is really good for that. Um, you got the red and black wires there where the battery hooks up, and uh, the lamp connects between these two white wires. There was originally a third. Uh, wire that the lamps connected to because how it worked is of course this ran two lamps one lamp would be between one wire and that third wire and the other lamp would be between the other white wire and that third wire but uh, you can hook one lamp between two white wires and it works just fine and it had a high and low setting the high and low setting uh, of course on low it just ran one lamp and on high it ran two lamps and uh, the high and low setting still works running just a single lamp because not only does it control whether one or both lamps light up but uh, it also controls how much power goes into the lamps because of course uh, when both lamp if it was on the two lamp mode but the power remained the same then those two lamps would get the same amount of power that just one lamp would get so each lamp would get only half the power so when you put it on the two lamp mode you'd have to increase the power as well so the lamps are driven the same. So if one lamp across the two white wires you can have it in the regular one lamp mode or you can switch it to two lamp mode and the lamp gets uh, a little more power and also it gets a lot more OCV. I find the uh, the apparent OCV uh, goes up as well. So that's really nice. It's quite a versatile ballast even for running uh, just one lamp. So, uh, we're going to use this ballast to run that dead lamp. I could throw this thing on the uh, full ham workhorse too, but I figure if I do that, the full ham's going to just absolutely kill it in like seconds. And uh, I'd like to torture it a bit longer than that, and this ballast uh, should do good for that. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, this ballast, as I said, it runs on, it was designed to run on 9.6 volts. Uh, I've tried it on 6 volts and I've tried it on 12 volts and it works just fine in both cases. It's best to run it on 6 volts because you don't lose hardly any lamp power but uh, 
the uh, transistor heats up a lot less. You can see it's, the transistor's got an impressive heat sink on it. It does get very hot. Blocking oscillators are very inefficient in that regard. But uh, I'm going to hook this up to my 15 volt Toshiba laptop power supply, but I'm going to have uh, an incandescent light bulb in series to reduce the voltage to uh, ideally around 6 or 7 volts. Alright, I got my red green boat light in series with the ballast. Don't think I've ever shown this on YouTube before. Got it at a thrift store for five dollars. Let's uh, see what happens. Voltage to the ballast is about 11 volts right now. Because the lamp has actually started, it's uh, drawing less current now, so voltage to the ballast is higher. I'm on the one lamp mode. If I switch to the two lamp mode, current will go higher and thus uh, voltage should go down. Yeah, the lamp got slightly dimmer voltage to the ballast now, six and a half volts. Red green light glowing brightly. I smell something. Oh yeah, that's getting really, really hot. Okay, something I don't normally use for stuff like this. I got my Numar 12 volt linear power supply. Let's see how that works. Wow, really weird shadow. Oh, it went away. <laughs> well, ballast is, whoa, ballast is seeing about 8 volts. Oh man, transistor is getting very hot, too hot to touch. Let's try something else. Let's, uh, let's switch the lamp, turn the lamp around. So I do know that makes a difference. Ouch. Very hot. See how that works. Oh, bright orange, orange pinkish peach colored glow there. The incandescence of the filament. The filament heats up so hot that it glows. It looks so weird when it uh when it casts a shadow. Like that. That's really weird. That's a shadow you're looking at there. Eight, eight volts and a third going into the ballast. I spun the lamp around again. Let's see how that works. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to turn it off, because the transistor is getting so hot, it's starting to uh, burn that blue tape, that blue tape that wraps around the transformer. I think it's starting to actually burn it. <laughs> I'm going to try something new, something that might or might not be good, but I know if I throw this lamp on the full ham, it's going to just wipe it out in seconds, but I wonder if I were to connect the full ham in series with an incandescent light bulb so as to limit or lower the voltage to the full ham. I have no idea if the if that would be bad for the full ham or maybe if the full ham has under voltage protection, I don't know. But uh I'm willing to give it a shot. Alright, in an experiment that may or may not be a good idea, I have the full ham workhorse two connected in series with an incandescent light bulb. I don't know what size light bulb I should use. I'll start with a forty watt unit. Let's see what that does. Hmm. Interesting. So the full ham actually works. Um, it's still torturing that bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out for an even smaller incandescent. Here's another 40 watt unit, but it's rated for 130 volts. See how that works. Interesting. Let me take my multimeter and uh, see what voltage the uh, full ham is getting in this setup. So the full ham will work on reduced voltage. Is it good for it? I don't know. I can't really imagine it being bad for it. This ballast has uh, impressed me in all other aspects so far. It's very robust. It's killed several lamps. Boat 90 volts. Oh man, 
The lamp sure ain't liking that. Hundred and five volts. Well, now that the lamp has settled down a bit, voltage is over 100 volts. Oh, that seems to be working well so far. So, uh, note fellow experimenters, you can run a full ham workhorse ballast. At least it appears you can run a full ham workhorse ballast at a uh, reduced AC voltage. And uh, it'll perform fine. It'll just uh, put less current into the lamp. It'll probably make for better experimenting. I've actually heard that some electronic ballasts for AC power will actually run on DC, 120 volts DC, which is uh, kind of weird. Well, this is sitting here not minding very much. Ballast is seeing about 93 volts. Let me put a slightly higher bulb in. Actually, even if I, whatever bulb I put in now, the lamp's going to complain again. Yeah. I'll put another 40 watt bulb in anyway. Ballast is seeing about 101 volts. Current is 0.15 amps. And of course, because with this ballast, the bulb's being driven with perfect AC current instead of biased AC current, both of the cathodes are glowing red instead of just one. Let me switch out for a 60 watt bulb. Alright, enough of this crap. The full ham's connected directly to power now. Let's just kill the crap out of it. Alright, and go. Overcurrent protection tripping. Well, it's trying to get there. That lamp is just causing, it's complaining so much. There it goes. Maybe. Should die very soon. I've only got a minute of tape left, so I hope it dies before I have to change tapes. Oh, she blew. Done. That is the end of that lamp forever. Phew, smells smells like something burning. And there it is. Can't really see the blackening. But, uh, she is dead. This is my first vintage lamp that I've ever had to put the rest. But, uh, it was time for it to go. That's for sure. Now, the question is, did the full ham survive? Absolutely. It holds, this ballast is absolutely unstoppable. So, uh, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed today's lamp frying. Let's see that again, unplug it. Oh, 
turn the exposure way up. Whoa, we're getting orange now. That's usually the color of death. It's a bit hot, not crazy hot. Thirteen point eight volts. 